So we recently uh, got new pillows. Bed pillows. Pillows you know, to sleep on. So we, uh, I, I, won't, I won't admit how old our previous pillows were. In fact, I'm not even sure how old our previous pillows were. But they, they got to the point where they had to be replaced. Uh, we, we actually tried to revive the old pillows. Uh, truth be told, we, we, we washed them. Uh, trying to you know, fluff them up and, and make them fresh and clean and new again. And unfortunately, they came out um, like speed bumps. <laughs> I mean, was, uh, there was one part of the pillow that did come out that had, in about two thirds of the way across my pillow at least, there was a spot I could put right here, and I could sleep on it comfortably because it fit, but the whole rest of the pillow was just a mess. So, anyway, we went shopping for pillows. Have you been shopping for pillows lately? Oh my goodness! There are like a million different kinds of pillows. There are, you know, there, there are your typical down pillows, you know, with very soft but they you know, compact to nothing. There's alternative down. It's not really down. It's alternative down. And then there's the foam pillows, and the, they kind of wear out over time. The foam pillows. Then there's gel pillows. That have this layer of gel in them. Then there's memory foam that you know remembers where you put your head. And there's you know, and then they have these other crazy ones. There's like buckwheat pillows, and there's there, there's spring pillows. They actually have springs in them. There's water pillows. You can fill it with water as much as you want. It's a water pillow, like it doesn't burst on the bed. I mean, there's all kinds of pillows out there. So can you guess what kind of pillow we got? Pills. The same kind as we had before. Why? Because we knew we would get a good rest with our pillows. The Bible talks about rest so often. We've talked about rest already in the last number of weeks. The Bible talks about rest not just so that our bodies feel rejuvenated and we feel energetic in the morning. The Bible talks about rest because rest is something that can deepen our faith and can help us connect in better ways with God. Rest is something that can do that like nothing else can. The Bible talks about rest tons of times throughout, throughout, from beginning to end, there's mentions of rest. If we summarized the whole story of the Bible as it talks about rest, we can summarize it in three simple steps. And they are these three steps. God gave us rest as a gift. We (coughs) took rest and messed it up. And then Jesus shows us what rest can be like. So keep that in mind, because we're going to look at rest kind of from beginning to end. I promise it won't take that long. We're going to try to do Old Testament rest in about five minutes. Uh, We'll see if we can, and then see what Jesus has to say about it. It first comes up in the first chapter of the Bible, the book of Genesis. God starts creating the world. God separates the light from darkness. Heavens from the earth creates animals and vegetables and trees and shrubs and everything else creates people. And then on the seventh day, what did God do? God rested. God took a day and rested to look back at all the things that God made, that God repeatedly said that they were good. God no longer did everything that God did before, but God rested on that seventh day. A little while later, as we turn the pages into Exodus, we encounter the story that Jim just read for us. This story of the people in Israel, what this amazing, miraculous, saving moment by God. They were on the top of the world. They were on cloud nine. They were partying. They were excited. They were thrilled for three days. And then what happened? They got hungry. And they got cranky. And they asked Moses, why did you lead us out in this wilderness if you're just going to kill us and let us starve? And God stepped in and basically said, are you kidding me? I just saved you from centuries of enslavement. Do you think I cannot feed you? And so God sent quail, and God sent manna. The most hilarious part of that manna story, just hilarious, is when the people see the flaky substance on the ground, and they say, what is it? 
The, the word that they use for what is it is manna. They're saying manna. And, that's, it's, and we've got that it's manna. It means what is it? It is God's gift to them. And that's what God says. God says, as you collect this for six days, you can eat your fill on those six days. But don't collect more than just that day because it's just going to rot. But on the sixth day, they get to do what? They get to collect a double portion. They get to boil or bake as much as they want because the seventh day is a Sabbath, a complete day of rest. Sabbath literally means rest. God gave them rest. And God gave it to them as a gift. God gave them the gift of rest to show them and provide time for them to reflect back and see how thankful they can be for the things that God had done. He was turning their attention from the things that they normally do to the things that they needed to pay attention to in order to survive. We have an attention challenge in our day. Our attention is so fixed on so many other things that what an opportunity we have for God to give us a command to rest, to be able to then pay attention to the things that God has done. Oh, what that can do when we pay undivided attention to the things that God has done. So those were the only times that rest shows up. The next, the next place that rest shows up is just a while later in the Ten Commandments. You know, God took Moses up on the mountain. God gave the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not use the name of the Lord in vain. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. And number four is this bizarre, you shall observe the Sabbath and keep it special. And keep it holy. Now, most of us, hopefully, have not stolen anything in the last few days. Hopefully, none of us have lied too badly in the last few days. Hopefully, we have not used the name of the Lord in vain too many times. Have we observed the Sabbath? I mean, it's on par with murder and stealing and using the name of the Lord in vain. It's in that same group of ten. It defines a relationship with God. The Sabbath is that. God gave it as a commandment to go and rest. A while after the commandment was given, the people of Israel, God's people, realized, wait a minute, this is one of the Ten Commandments. This is huge. So they realized, we need to make absolutely sure that we're following this commandment. So they came up with a, a group of rules for how to observe the Sabbath, how to rest, and make sure that they're resting. So they came up with actually 39 different laws, different rules of how to rest. And then they took each of these 39 and they divided them into six categories each. And then in those six categories, they came up with all these more specific laws flowing down from all these categories. Now, did these categories seem weird? Like, they're not the categories I would probably write. I mean, kindling fire, erasing two letters, tying or untired, spinning, beating wool. Like, that's a little odd, isn't it? This is a description of their labor and their work. Their attention was completely fixed on this at the time. Because what these things are describing is what it took for the people to build the temple for God. These are all the kinds of activities that they did in order to build God's temple. And as, that, as they were doing that, these six days of the week, their Sabbath meant none of that. You can't do any of that because our attention is fixed on that, not on how to be thankful for what God has done. Not resting from those other things for what God has done. So two things happen. And people did usually one of the two. Either people said, I love these rules. I am going to follow them completely and observe the Sabbath and rest. Can you guess what the other people did? 
<laughs> Throw out those rules. They're silly. I'm not going to observe those. And along with it, they're like, what's the Sabbath for anyway? When this trickled down to Jesus, Jesus could not have any of that. Because the Sabbath was so important. In fact, the Sabbath to God's people was like you and me wearing a t-shirt that says, I follow God. It was this way of defining, I am a follower of God. It was that specific. Because none of the other people groups rested. Nobody else took like a whole day every week and didn't do their other work. No, none of the other people relaxed or separated themselves or had a different routine. Everybody had their attention fixed on the normal things all the time. It was the people of God that stepped away from their normal routine to do some different things, and that defined them as followers of God. And Jesus is like, this is too good. This is too important to define who we are when we're connected to God and in a relationship with God. It's too important to give up. But follow it the right way as God intended for it. I think Sabbath could be just as defining in our day. I mean, what do we do? We work endlessly. We're, our attention is fixed on so many other things. Our attention is pulled here and there and everywhere. And how often is it actually fixed on the things that we want it to be fixed on? And then once it finally is for five minutes, we get pulled to this because our phone pings, or the phone rings, or somebody else encounters us with this, or there's something in front of us. We thought, oh wait, I didn't do that yet. We're constantly pulled in different directions. What if our attention can be fixed in this way to be able to rest? So Jesus gets excited about the Sabbath. And so here's what he says about the Sabbath. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the law by harvesting grain on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days of the life of the high priest and broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only priests are allowed to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath, so the Son of Man is born even of the Sabbath. What is going on? What, what is Jesus talking about? Jesus and the disciples are walking through this grain field on the Sabbath. They're, they're probably hungry, they're picking heads of grain, they're snacking as they walk through the field. The Pharisees, you know, these are the people who are in that camp, the people that they're like, I'm going to follow the Sabbath, and I'm going to do all those 39 groups of six plus rules. I'm doing it all, because that's how the Sabbath works. They looked at the disciples who were snacking on the grain, and they're like, hey, they're breaking law number 32, and they shouldn't be doing that, and you're their leader, Jesus. You shouldn't be endorsing that or allowing them to do it, so what's wrong with you? How could you possibly call yourself a follower of God? You are not. You are desecrating the name of God in the way that God commanded and encouraged and gave us a gift of the Sabbath. This is not right. So then what does Jesus say? He starts talking about David and loaves of bread. What does that have to do with the Sabbath? This whole encounter, if you want to read it, 1 Samuel, I think it's 12, somewhere around there. 1 Samuel is a fascinating story. David and his companions are running away from King Saul. They're running away because they're being pursued by King Saul. They're, they're hungry, they're tired. They come upon the high priest and, and the place where the high priest was ministering. They come in and they're like, we're hungry. Can you give us the bread? The show bread, they called it. It was 12 loaves of bread that were baked every week. They baked 12 loaves of bread and put them on the altar as a dedication to God. Every week, they changed out the bread to have fresh bread as a dedication and offering to God. That bread was still there. And, and David knew it, so he's like, give us the bread. And the priest is like, give us the bread? This is the bread that's dedicated to God. And David's like, we're hungry, give us the bread. The priest is okay, here's the bread. So David eats the bread and gives it, to him, gives it to his companions who are hungry and wandering through, trying to escape from King Saul. 
What does that have to do with the Sabbath? Two things. Rules and hunger. Rules. Who broke the rules in the David situation? David broke the rules. Who else broke the rules? The priest. The priest totally broke the rules. David's not, nobody's supposed to eat the bread. That's like set apart for God. Nobody else can eat that. So David broke the rules, the priest broke the rules. Okay, the disciples. Who broke the rules with the disciples? The disciples broke the rules. Who else broke the rules? Jesus broke the rules, right? He totally broke the rules. Jesus is saying, it's not about the rules. We can, we can define and restrict and, and describe exactly how this whole rest thing is supposed to be done. But once we're just living by the rules, we miss the whole point. The rest that God provided us is a gift to us to turn our attention toward the things that God has blessed us with already. So if we just rule it to death, then that's all it is. It's just death. He's saying it's not about the rules. But then there's the other thing. It's about rules, and it's about hunger. What were the disciples doing that was the problem? They were picking the heads of grain. Why were they picking the heads of grain? Because they were hungry. Jesus tells a story about David and all of his friends who were wandering through trying to escape from King Saul. They asked for the bread because they were hungry. The people in Israel were complaining at Moses and complaining at God because they were walking through the wilderness, wandering, and they didn't have any food, and they were hungry. Can you guess what the two episodes in Mark chapter 2 just before this have to do with? People being Hungry! It, it is! It's crazy! It, it's when Jesus goes and has dinner with, at the house of Levi. He's having dinner with taxpayers and sinners, with the scum of their day. Jesus is there because the people are hungry. There is a hunger that the Bible constantly talks about. And it's not just a food hunger. All the food stories, all the hunger stories in the Bible, I've never wondered why there are so many. Jesus feeds the 4,000, Jesus feeds the 5,000. We have two episodes where Jesus feeds the 5,000. They're hungry people. Look how Jesus ends this section. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people, not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. What's our need? Oh, we're certainly hungry. But we're hungry. Our need is that we hunger for who God is, what God has done, and the need to be connected deeper and deeper with the God who made us and designed us to connect and be connected with Him. We're hungering for that. And if we don't have a routine of being able to set aside sometimes, some way, some activity, something, that helps us meet that need on a regular basis, our need is going to go unmet and we will continue to be hungry. The work of Jesus, the gift of God to meet our need, this opportunity to rest and to pause in the presence of the Lord is a chance to be able to grow in faith and be deeper connected to God. So then, the million-dollar question that we always ask, well, how do we do it? What do we do on the Sabbath? How long does it last? What can we do? What can't we do? What should we do? What should we not do? Does Jesus answer that in this passage? No. He doesn't describe what we can and can't do. He said, here's the big need. Now go and figure it out. What works for you? What routine works? What activities work? When it works, when it happens, what day it's on, how it happens, who it's with, we get to figure that out. So long as our hunger for being connected to God and our attention is put on God happens, then we are observing the Sabbath and keeping it special. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift, the command to rest. Lord, as we try to fix our